comic legend Dave Chappelle was assaulted on stage this week at the Hollywood Bowl. His attacker was dealt with pretty thoroughly by the security guards and Chappelle was able to return to the stage and make a little quip that it must have been a trans man. Um, Tom, is there a deeper significance to this kind of attack? Because it's more than just a heckle. Yeah, it is. And we don't know what this man's motivations were. Um, the reporting seems to suggest he might have been resident at home or shelter at the particular time. He was, he did reportedly have a weapon on him, like a replica gun that had a blade inside, which mm. raises the stakes to a certain degree. But I think it's just hard not to see it in the context of all of the flack that Dave Chappelle has got. The accusations, essentially, that his jokes around gender ideology, trans, the trans issue in general, were not just offensive or mean or whatever, but that were actually a form of violence against trans people. And I think the response to it was actually quite revealing in that there were a lot of headlines, a lot of outlets who seemed to be more upset by that trans man quip yeah. rather than the attack <laughs> itself, which I think at least gives us, whilst we don't know this guy's particular motivations, at least gives us a snapshot of where we're at when you kind of think that words are violence, when you think that offensive speech is the most dangerous thing in the world, you get into a situation where comedians are getting rugby tackled on stage and the thing you're upset about is the joke that the comedian told afterwards. So in that sense, I think it's reflective regardless of what the particulars of this attack and what he was trying to achieve might turn out to be. Last year, there was a protest outside Netflix trying to get, you know, Dave Chappelle's uh, special, The Closer, cancelled. And all of the complaints were that Chappelle was literally inflicting violence upon trans people with mm. his jokes that he's making their harming their lives making life difficult yeah. for them i think the quote was we're not here because we can't take a joke we're here because these jokes are taking lives which we went around the world was incredible it's, it's it's extraordinary and then also there were some scuffles and some violence at the actual demo against some quite funny counter protesters <laughs> who held up really offensive signs like we like dave and jokes are funny um so this, this idea has been around for a long time, not just that jokes are violence, but words are violence. I mean, we've got to push back against that, haven't we, Ella? Yeah, well, I mean, when you first, when I first read the Dave Chappelle story, I, you know, it said he's been rushed on stage and you think, oh dear, and he was you know, making jokes, but Jamie Foxx got involved and <laughs> Dave Chappelle was saying, I've done 35 years in comedy and I've always wanted to stomp someone backstage. And now I have <laughs> pictures of the guy with a very Ooh. sore looking broken arm. It's gonna and hurt and then more details come out and you think he had a he had a gun, which, you know, it's a replica gun with a knife attached, but he had a gun. He could have shot Dave Chappelle. It was a and, fake gun, but with the, that you could flick a knife yeah, out of. Yeah, but I mean, if you can get a fake gun in with a knife, then you could get a real gun in. And so, that, so this is this was a very serious thing, mm. even though Dave Chappelle did a very good job of, um, you know, being a good performer and, and sort of shaking it off. And you do have to say that if it, we are at a, a situation in which you are literally saying that, jokes are so harmful that it's legitimate for someone to get up either that it's legitimate for someone to get up and slap someone mm. on national television as will smith did punch, you know hit someone or that they can get up with a gun you know we're forever being told that escalation is a very real thing there's a sliding scale of abuse and mm. you know you send dog whistles out to people when you do these kinds of things and no one very few people are actually challenging the idea that you should be forced to sit in your seat or walk out if you want and take a joke even if you don't like it rather than resorting to violence i mean the thing about you know dave Chappelle is that it this is specific to the current moment and it is specific to the trans and gender discussion because there have been comedians long before him and actually dave Chappelle himself at the start of his career was making you know he he's made his whole career is based on making offensive jokes against white people. Yeah, I mean, just a power so is far more offensive than any of his. Yeah, and, you know, and more recent. Material. You know, in, in you know, you had Eddie Murphy making some very heinous um, uh, homophobic jokes in his time. Richard Pryor being the first kind of uh, black comedian to get up and say "motherfucker" several times on you know all, all the time, and was very controversial. Um, you know, Lenny Bruce. I could go on, uh, but the uh, the idea of um, people resorting to violence. It, for such a mundane thing as a joke has become now more normalized because mm. the stakes have been raised so high with the trans thing because it's suggested that you were literally threatening trans lives by making a joke. And, um, you know, there's a temptation to kind of say, oh, for God's sake, this is so silly. But it actually, I think, should be taken kind of seriously 
because um you know comedy is all about pushing the boundaries yeah and not not to get alarmist about it but you can imagine some of the smaller comics who go to dingy um clubs in our know, back rooms and stuff and get up and try out their yeah. dodgiest material in the starting, roof, of, roof room of a pub or something yes, yeah starting to sweat a little bit because you do think oh hang on a minute am i gonna get lamped and that's you know we you know without again without being alarmist that's not a good place to be in so is comedy a risky business now then tom well it feels like it is i mean this is something that some comedians particularly those who want to kind of push the envelope a little bit. I've been saying for some time that even just the sort of heckles are becoming more pearl clutching mm. and over the top people morally object <laughs> to comedy in a way that they haven't done, at least, you know, from the kind of days of the Blue Rinse Brigade or whatever. And it, I think with Chappelle and the whole trans issue, it's particularly telling because he, he sort of belongs to a generation which feels like a distant era now in which making fun of difference was not only okay, it was mm. kind of seen as quite a good thing. You sort of let off steam, you laugh at one another, and therefore it's a, it's a way in which you almost transcend that difference. Yeah. The reaction to him in recent years has, has shown that on this issue, but on many others as well, that, that game is now over. And that's a real shame mm. because not only is it really kind of literal minded and sort of Philistine to suggest that someone is deeply transphobic because they happen to make jokes about gender or transgenderism itself or transgender figures or whatever, um, not only is it kind of reductive in that sense, it also gets us further away from the place we want to be, which is that comedy and anywhere else is a place in which kind of people of different backgrounds can get together and have a laugh without being too chocolate box and cliche about it. But yeah, it does feel like the fact that it's him who's become the focus for it does show us that that kind of more free and easy, relaxed, you can make these offensive jokes because you knew that people wouldn't take them too seriously because we're all human at the end of the day or whatever. Mm. That's kind of gone by the wayside now. 